16th of April, 1921. We lived in Kriegerbold, Swarra, and seems that was where my, my father was born into, you know, he was Robert O'Neilly. His brother was Hugh Woods Neely. And then there was George. And they had a sister, Hester, who was a nurse. But my, my father was, was the one that stayed in the home. He was a farmer, you know, and doing that sort of thing. I was born in Craigabool, and we lived in Craigabool. It was just a wee small farm, and it was a thatched house. I don't know where it still exists. Many of them I thought mm. it would be nice to go round that district and the car just mm. to see, but I don't. If it's there now, it was a thatched roof, and, and Mum had to get a man to thatch it, you know, whenever it needed darning and all that, or a new coat of thatch. And it was so nice and warm because it wasn't terribly big, it was just a room and kitchen and an outhouse, you know, sort of a log ship thing, you know, in the, in the middle, middle of the country. <laughs> we walked from Craigable to Carhill School. That seemed to be easy enough for me, like, you know, there wasn't anything big at it, it was just arithmetic and reading and, and poetry and singing, and we had, we had a day for singing, <laughs> so I took part in that. There must have been, with a bit of 20 or 30 at it, you know, not, not any more than that, I'm only guessing there, I'm not sure. I had a good teacher with Mrs Norris, Mrs Norris was Miss Jimison and she married Sam Norris, the farmer, and he happens to be it happened to it happened to be your neighbour, you know, Sam and, and Mrs. Norris. She was very good. And then later on she got an assistant, Miss Vance. Miss Vance came to help her with the with the small one, beginners, you know, the infants and that sort of thing. And then when they got old then they got, went to the intermediate school in Garva. I carried a couple of cows, you know, to supply us with milk. And uh, I can't remember a horse, but probably that was a horse. There was no tractors in those days, you know. I, I can't remember his horse. But it used to get the thrashing done by steam, a steam engine and a thrashing machine behind it, you know, and it'd come to the farms and come to you, to me, and then leave me and go to you. So it went all around the farm, you know. Corn thrashed and, and hay, hay thrashed. Grassy, grassy, grassy was kept for the market. Well, I suppose I probably just helped on the farm. I don't remember having a, a job of any kind, you know. Aye. And we used to keep a couple of pigs, maybe, or something. There was a pig house at it. You know, that, and that, in those days, you, you sort of had things in the, in the house that you were able to work with, you know. And, and, and feed them and rear them and take care of them in a sow with a lot of her pigs. Oh yes, I was Uncle Bob. He had a lot of land, you see. He was a well-to-do farmer. He had two or three farms, maybe more, you know. He had a neighbouring farm, as well as the one he was living in. You know, he, was, he was Bob Stewart, Robert James Stewart. And um, he had his own farm, and he had, he, he just bought, he, I think he just bought the land, bought the house and the land. It went up for sale, you see, 
and he bought it, you know, until he had, I think it was three farms or maybe more, not very big, I mean, and we, and houses with them. There's Fanny Ann Boyd and her sister lived in one house, and she had a bit of land, and he, he laboured her farm, and he, all he had was horses, a couple of horses. I gathered potatoes <laughs> and I tied corn and uh, grass seed, tied the grass seed and helped to drop the potatoes in the potato field. And anything that was going on, he uh, just needed you, you know, when you come, come on, or go in such a place, such a field. It was all hard work, but it wasn't overpowering, you know. But you kept going, dropping potatoes out of a basket thing, you know, or a bag, and had them in a lap, you know, that way. I used to keep hens. I used to order a bat, and I'd commit a lot of hens, of chickens, from the hatchery and got a house, a hen house, a bird house for them. And the hoover, and there's a, a man, carpenter, lived near us, Sam Bolton. I Sam Bolton, here there was. And he made me a hoover. And I got that lamp to heat the chicks and to put them in the hoover. And put them in this house, you see and read the chickens to their hens mm -hmm. and starting to lay. Leave me a box to fill, yeah. to put my, chick my, my eggs in, you see, and put them in a, in a house of their own then. And when they were starting to lay, I ordered another. Oh, I was getting into the business. I was getting into the business then. I ordered another hatch of chickens so that they would be starting to lay when the first lot were slack enough to cast their feathers. So I had the whole thing going. <laughs> Making money. Sam, Samuel Gilmer, he, he was working to a uh, road contractor. Um, what was his name? Oh, I forget his name. He was he was well up on the business like a road contracted, you know. He had a he had a lorry, you see, and all that. And getting sand and gravel for roads, you know. That was his job. Just by chance. Just we met. And he was a good man, he was a very thoughtful. Decent, loving man. Uh, the good old days. I used to feel sorry for them all, for the soldiers and that sort of thing, you know. And, and the news, the news was always bad. And I only had a wee radio, and later on I got a TV. With the family, uh, I probably was able to get plenty of food for everybody, you know, because every day somebody maybe didn't want much to eat at the time and somebody else maybe wanted more. <laughs> so you had to rise in the family as best you could in those days. And I made sure I boiled them potatoes and cabbage, turnip, carrots, Plenty of vegetables and plenty of milk. And we'd, we always had a couple of cows in the byre. And of course, the wee calves were to re be reared. So we had to look after the wee calves and feed them and take them out. We always had a couple of rows, a couple of drills we'd talk about, of cabbages up the potato field 
and then the another one down through the potatoes, and then cabbages were looked after, you know. And turnips, there was always a square of the field sown in turnip seeds. And the cattle got some of the turnips too, or they'd have been able to clear up any wee small ones that were left, they could eat, eat them up. And the pigs and the piggery. Oh, it was easy enough, but you had to work hard. You had to work hard to keep that up, you see.